Hello friends, I'm Cliffhanger, you are on my channel. And today I will tell you about a movie, in which a 911 operator takes a life-altering call from a teenage girl, who has just been abducted. She realizes that she must confront a killer from her past in order to save the girl's life. Sit back, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and be sure to watch to the end. We will have something to discuss in the comments. Jordan is a 911 operator in Los Angeles. She always gives her best, is focused and does a great job and is romantically involved with a colleague, an officer named Paul. One day, Jordan receives a call from a teenage girl named Leah, who tells her that a man is trying to break into her house while her parents are away. Jordan sends officers to the girl's address and advises her to hide in the room. The woman tells Leah how to trick the criminal into thinking that she escaped through the window, and it seems to work. He is about to leave the house, but suddenly the call is cut off. Jordan automatically calls back and the sound of the ringing phone attracts the attention of a man, who goes upstairs and finds his victim. Jordan pleads with the perpetrator not to harm the girl, but he answers. It's already done. After which the girl screams and the call ends. Jordan is shocked, because she understands that it is her fault that the criminal found the girl. And when the next day she learns that Leah's mutilated corpse was discovered, Jordan has a mental breakdown. Her colleagues and her boyfriend try to support her, but nothing helps her. After six months, the woman no longer works as an operator, but teaches at the headquarters of the rescue service. We see a girl named Casey, walking with her friend through the mall, who soon leaves forgetting her phone. In the parking lot, a car almost hits Casey, and the girl drops her phone. The driver gets out to apologize, but then grabs the girl and kidnaps her. Jordan, meanwhile, shows her students the hive, a place where operators take calls and where she herself worked. The woman introduces the students to the new operator, but suddenly becomes focused when the operator takes a call from Casey. The girl found her friend's phone in her pocket and is calling from the trunk where the kidnapper directs her. The rookie operator gets lost, so Jordan takes over the call. When Casey starts to panic, Jordan also has a panic attack, but she pulls herself together to help the girl and calms her down. Unfortunately, the phone does not have a GPS chip, so the woman cannot trace the call. Jordan gathers all the information the girl can provide, the color of the car, that the car is on the highway, that the kidnapper is a white male in his 30s, wearing sunglasses. Jordan tells the girl to knock out the headlight of the car and stick her hand in there to get people's attention. Fortunately, it happens quickly. A woman calls 911 after seeing the girl's hand sticking out. She says where it is and the number of the car, but it turns out that the number does not match the car. The woman decides to act against the recommendations of the 911 officer and catches up with the driver to see his face. But he, realizing that he is being followed, immediately changes route and pulls off the highway. Suddenly, Casey notices paint and a shawl in the car after which she begins to panic again, thinking that she will just be buried. Jordan reassures the girl again and tells her to start pouring paint into the hole where the headlight was, to leave a mark. At a traffic light, an enthusiastic man tells the kidnapper that paint is pouring from his trunk, to which he reacts strangely and drives into the parking lot and, angry at Casey and her actions, decides to put the girl to sleep. But suddenly, the citizen who warned the man about the spilled paint, whose name is Alan, comes up to them and asks if everything is in order, to which the man behaves even more strangely. Alan pretends to be satisfied with the answer and goes to the car to call 911, but at that moment, the criminal breaks the car window and attacks Alan, smashes his phone and beats him with a shovel. But during the scuffle, the criminal breaks a bottle of soporific drugs because of which he begins to panic. Soon, the girl wakes up again in the trunk of Ellen's car, but with Ellen next to her. The man starts screaming despite the girl's pleas not to, which causes the kidnapper to freak out, stop, and kill Ellen with a screwdriver. Jordan persuades Casey to get Ellen's wallet and read his data, after which she manages to find information about his car. 
Meanwhile, Jordan's boyfriend, Officer Paul, finds the kidnapper's car, but there are no fingerprints. The perpetrator cleaned up after himself. However, an attentive cop notices a broken bottle of saprific drugs that the criminal forgot about. Casey is desperate and thinks that she has no chance to survive, and therefore, knowing that the operators are recording calls, she leaves a message for her mother, and Jordan asks the girl not to give up. At this point, the car runs out of gas, the offender stops at a gas station, and Casey, having gathered herself, realizes that she can get out into the car, which she does, attracting the attention of a gas station worker. He's about to help the girl, but the criminal doses him with the gasoline and sets him on fire, and then, in a rage, beats Casey, which is why she passes out. Meanwhile, the prince on a saprific drugs bottle lead the police to identify the perpetrator, Michael Foster, a medical worker, has wife and children. The police go straight to his house and interrogate his wife about where he might be. In the same place, Paul finds an elder dedicated to a young blonde woman, who looks exactly like Casey. Meanwhile, the criminal is parked somewhere in the countryside. He pulls Casey out of the trunk and is shocked to see that all this time she was talking on the phone. Jordan calls the criminal by his first name and says that they all know about him, that he has no chance, that he should give up and asks the criminal not to harm the girl. But he answers. Done. After that, Jordan realizes that this is the same person who killed Leah six months ago, who also looked like Casey. The man breaks the phone and the call is interrupted. At Michael Foster's house, Paul finds a photograph and realizes that the family has a country house and learns its address. The police arrive at the house when it's already dark, but they don't find any evidence inside. And therefore, the Jordan's boss sends her home, because what is happening is no longer her area of responsibility. Michael, meanwhile, brings the girl to his hideout, where he washes her hair. Casey makes another attempt to escape by spraying something in the man's face and runs into another room, where she sees something that incredibly terrifies her. Jordan did not listen to her boss and continues to sit at the computer, listening to her conversation with the criminal over and over again. Suddenly, she realizes that the moment before Foster smashed the phone, she hears the ringing sound of metal. She decides to go to Foster's cabin herself, because it was in that area that the telephone tower picked up Casey's phone last time. In the barn, the woman discovers old photos and realizes that Foster did have a blonde sister who was very close to him, but who died of cancer. In the last picture, Michael kisses his sick and hairless sister on the lips. Jordan goes outside and hears the metal she heard on the tape. First, the girl finds something that made a sound, and then she sees a hatch in the ground leading to some kind of basement. Jordan wants to call for help, but accidentally drops her phone, forcing her to go downstairs. She sneaks through Foster's hideout and, spotting him, hides in a room that turns out to be a replica of the man's sister's room. Michael removes a wig from a mannequin lying on the bed, which turns out to be a scalp taken from a living person. Now Jordan realizes that Foster is crazy, who never came to terms with his sister's death, and began to kidnap blonde girls her age, scalping them. Only miraculously, he does not notice the hidden Jordan. Michael returns to Casey and prepares to cut the hair of her head, but Jordan bursts in and stops the maniac. The man starts drowning the woman, but the freed Casey stabs him with a pair of scissors. Together, the girls manage to escape to the surface, but the criminal is chasing them. Luckily, Casey first stabs him in the back with a pair of scissors, then Jordan kicks him, sending him down into the basement, knocking him unconscious. Jordan is about to call 911, but Casey stops her. Michael wakes up in his own basement, chained to a chair. When Jordan tells him that she is a 911 operator, he laughs and asks when the police will arrive. But his face changes when he finds out that the police won't come. The girls tell him a story, that Casey was allegedly able to escape from the criminal, and Jordan found her in the forest. But the girl was so scared that she does not remember where she escaped from, and Michael Foster simply disappeared without a trace. They leave, 
and finally Foster asks Jordan not to do this. To which she replies... It's already done. The end of the movie. Well, I think it was a good one. Please let me know what do you think about this movie and if you like the recap, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would be much appreciated. See you soon.